Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Edward Ng with the Pittsburgh Foundation. I'm just muting, I'm, I'm monitoring uh, the attendee uh, view over here. So uh, welcome to our webinar. Um, my name is Edward Ng, I'm with the Pittsburgh Foundation. Uh, I uh, help support the Community Foundation of Westmoreland. Um, we're very happy to have uh, Protect PT here to, to help us uh, uh, or help you all to, to learn how you can work remotely uh, effectively. Uh, so we have Mary Obringer, and I apologize if I'm uh, butchering your names, um, uh, Jillian Graber and Anne LeCoyer. Yeah? And let me hand it over and uh, let you guys say a few things. All right. Um, Ed, do you have the, um, the slides or do you want us to present the slides? Why don't you go ahead and present the slides if you want to, uh, Jillian, do you want me to pass control over to you or do you just want to grab control? Sure. Um, but if you would mind just passing control over to me, that'd be great. Yep. There you go. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yep. Looks fine. Excellent. Okay. And, um, and my, um, Chrome went down. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. <clears throat> we set out a, a poll before uh, before the um, the webinar and actually with the registration. Uh, so we have a lot of information to share with you, and we're going to share the results of that too. So if you took that um, that poll, thank you so much um, for for taking it, and it it really helped us guide the way to, to making this webinar the most effective and hopefully have the most information to help you in your organization. Um, if, if you'll just uh, really quick look at the, there's um, a way for you all to chat and to ask questions. So on your control panel, um, which should be on the right hand side of your own screen, um, you should be able to see there's a little thing for you to open up for questions, um, there's a little thing for you to open up a chat box to chat. Um, if y'all would just um, really quickly chat where you're um, where you're listening in from today, and and just say a hello to other people in the audience. That would be awesome. Just so we, we can start engaging in this um, in this virtual <laughs> webinar together. So I'm sorry about that, Jillian. I said I was going to cover some of the housekeeping items. So uh, I'm That's seeing okay. some stuff come in here. So thank you, everybody. Um, just to reiterate what uh, what Jillian was saying, uh, if you your tab there, you're going to have this uh, little tab on the side. Uh, most of you look like you found it, but uh, just to go from the top to bottom, you can uh, shrink your 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 dashboard with that little arrow to the right. When it's shrunken, it points to the left, and you can open it back up. Um, you've also can uh, you can mute yourself, but you're all going to be muted if you haven't figured that out already. You all start off muted. Um, what happens uh, is we can open your mic for you, but you can self mute. So if we open your mic and you've self muted, you still won't be able to talk to us. So make sure that uh, if you still see that uh, orange and with a slash through there, and you've uh, we've opened your mic. Go ahead and uncheck that so that you can speak to us. Uh, the next box underneath is just a view in a window mode or in a full screen mode. Uh, you can toggle between those anytime. And then the hand with the little green arrow going up, you can raise your hand and we will uh, see that and we can call on you uh, when we're ready to. Uh, and then of course, you guys are into the chat feature already. You can type in your chat messages and thank you very much everyone. And then lastly, in the in the dashboard, if you pop that open, there is a handout here with a slide deck that uh, Protect PT did uh, provide for us. So feel free to download that at any time uh, for your reference. Uh, I think that covers the housekeeping items, Jillian. I'll hand it back to right. you. Right. All right. Right. And I see people are here from Greensburg and um, uh, so and Donegal, PA. So great. Thanks, uh, everyone for joining today. And I hope that we can provide a, a lot of information for you all to, to help you with your organizing during this socially distant time that we have right now. This is a really unique time that we're dealing with. But I think that um, if we can do a little bit of learning and modification to our daily routines and, and some of the ways that we work, we are actually going to come out of this much better than, than when we started in the first place. So 
Um, thank you to the, the Community Foundation of Westmoreland County, as well as the Pittsburgh Foundation for, for allowing us this opportunity to teach some of the things that we've learned over the past couple of years, and actually even over the past month or so uh, with you guys today. Um, so uh, our presenters today, I'm Jillian Graber. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Protect PT and Promote PT. Um, we're a, a nonprofit organization uh, serving Westmoreland and part of Allegheny County as well. And we, um, we work on environmental issues primarily, uh, not only to ensure safety, security, and quality of life for our people in our communities, but also to um, promote a more sustainable and communal uh, world. So, this kind of falls into that realm where we're, we're um, looking at the ways that the COVID-19 virus is, is impacting us, our safety, security, and quality of life, and how we can uh, promote other things and, and work with other people to, to make it um, better for everyone. And so we also have Anne LeCure. She's our project and outreach coordinator. And Mary Obringer, she's our outreach assistant. Uh, this is our team. <laughs> we are a very small organization. Um, we have um, we have the three of us are, are some uh, are full time employees, and then we also have some staff that are part time as well, working on special projects. Um, so we very much work in this way all the time, and um, work v virtually, and work uh, with people across the state. Um, so so we've been using these tools, some of these tools, for quite a long time working with folks across the state, either on fracking issues, um, issues dealing with hydraulic fracturing and some of the environmental and health impacts, uh, to, um, doing, to, to working to promote a more sustainable world um, through working with uh, youth leaders uh, for the climate strike and, and things like that. So that's the type of work that we do. If you're interested, um, you can connect with us on our, our website, on social media, on Instagram. Um, we're, we're pretty much everywhere for Protect and Promote PT, trying to make our, our community safer and, um, and uh, free from pollution. So that's, that's our main mission. Um, what we're gonna cover today, we're going to uh, cover how we can work together and um, no matter where we are. We're also going to go over some Google tools available to aid in collaboration, online conferencing tools. We're gonna to talk about some potential barriers that folks might might have uh, when, when you know, dealing with this new virtual reality that we're in, as well as um, how you can use uh, tools like Catchifier to help you in your work. Um, and so, like I said, we did a survey. <clears throat> when you registered, you uh, were asked to take a survey. And we're going to share with you the survey results because it has guided us in putting this presentation together and what we decide to take time with and what we decide not to, to, to kind of skim over as well. Um, so a lot of you, it seems like a lot of you are already using Google Drive. There's a few people that aren't, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about Google Drive. If there's a topic that we cover in this presentation and you just think, oh, I need more information about it, please let us know because we're happy to talk with you offline about, you know, getting it a little bit more in depth with some of this uh, technology. And um, so people are using things like Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. Some folks are not using this or or don't or don't use it often. So we're gonna go over that a little bit with people. And then uh, we're also gonna talk about other platforms that'll help you with organizing like Notion and Slack. Um, okay, and so it seems like a lot of people are really familiar with Zoom, which is great. Um, there are people that do go to meetings, people that do um, Google Hangouts, MS Teams, Slack phone calls, and join me. Um, so there's so many, so many platforms out there right now where you can really communicate virtually with your staff and your volunteers and really all your stakeholders to make sure that everyone is is really staying engaged with your mission while we're you know working from home or or just living living at home without this uh constant contact as much with with the outside world um so how much has your team collaborated with uh strategy and and how much has this changed your your life is really what we were looking for here and it, so it seems like um not many people have really um, changed when they're working from home, which is great. And then some some people have changed a little bit and some people have changed a great deal. So like I said, if there's anything that we cover here that you need more information about or, or you want more extra help on, please let us know because we're happy to talk with you offline um, and, and try to make this an easy transition. 
So how often are you meeting with staff, volunteers, and other stakeholders virtually? It seems like a lot of people are, are meeting uh, with staff, volunteers, and stakeholders. So that's really great. They're probably using tools like Zoom or, or Google Meetings um, to, to talk with those folks. And so we're gonna teach you tools that you can use with those virtual meetings um, to, to connect and to work um, effect, uh, efficiently and effectively. Um, so we also asked what other technologies would you like to learn or be more proficient at? Uh, and there was a, a wide range of answers here, which is kind of cool to see like what people are using and what people want to use. Um, so we're going to talk about how using tools like Catch a Fire can actually help you with some of the things that we're not going to cover here today. Um, there's a lot of great um, programs right now on Catch a Fire and projects that you can you can uh, engage with specialized um, volunteers to 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 do um, over the course of um, your time working in this new way. Um, so how can we work together no matter where we are? Um, we can we can really keep our movements going. We can keep our our projects going while we're in this social distancing world. We can adapt. We can learn new things. Um, I was just listening to a podcast this morning about how kids are working differently um, to, for, to, to educate them and how educators have really had to shift away from uh, the classroom and into these virtual worlds. And, and I know personally, my kids um, sometimes are frustrated with this new platform. Uh, and some, some of them, you know, my, my older son has adapted very, very well. So um, learning these new tools, I think, will be something that we're going to need to know for the future, no matter what happens. Um, so I think learning these things now is really important um, while we have the opportunity to learn them and just really dive in uh, and be open to the possibilities. Um, so you can really, in real time, work together. You can create um, outreach materials, you can plan events, you can plan virtual events, uh, and you can continue to run your business all online, all collaborating with other people. Uh, you can track your changes and make things easy to view and reply to. So a lot of you might be using these tools right now, um, Google Suite. Google Suite is just a collection of applications from Google that allow us to share and collaborate among users. Um, and so these, these tools are all free, which is really awesome. I mean, cost is always a barrier when we're talking about working in the nonprofit sector. Um, so you know, using things that are free is, is great. And these are really powerful tools. So Drive is, is a, a tool that allows you to store data, um, very similar to Dropbox. But the cool thing about Drive is not only do you store the data, but you also can, um, can uh, make new files and new information in the storing system. So that's not something that Dropbox allows you to do. Um, you can also work Google Docs is very much like uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, and I know there are some Microsoft products out there like Microsoft 360 online where you can collaborate online, but uh, you do have to pay for that service. So again, um, this is something that you can do uh, with no financial um, you know, investment and it's a really powerful tool that you can use. Google Sheets is very much like Excel. Slides is very much like PowerPoint. We're in slides right now. We're going to go over some ways that you can use slides in very different uh, ways to organize, which is really cool. Um, one of our collaborators actually showed us some really cool stuff you can do with Google Slides, and uh, it's really helped our work. And uh, Zoom is, uh, is also like Google Meetings. Hangouts is very much like Skype. And Google Forms, um, this is a way that we can survey people. Um, we can do all kinds of different stuff with Google Forms. We're not going to really talk about Google Forms a lot today. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people already had that information, but if you if you need to know a little bit more about that, please connect with us offline. Um, and so with these application, you can link to different files, you can live group edit, you can control different permissions so you can make sure your data is secure. And um, you can do file storing um, synchronized service developed by Google. So this is a really awesome way to, to like, like I said, to not only store your data, but also share it and um, live collaboration. So um, this is a little video that we're going to share with you. And this just kind of goes over some of the key features of Drive. 
um, we put these into videos because we wanted to try to find a way to to navigate the system, um, you know, uh, kind of more hands-on than we would just with a slide. So right here, I'm going into my Google Drive and I'm clicking on this, this drive. Um, this little symbol here is the drive. You can see that I'm logged in as Protect BT. That's really important to log in um, because if people are sharing things with you, they're gonna ask you what email to share them with. And that's important. Um, you can see I can go into different files. I can store my files here, all in my drive, just like a little virtual filing cabinet. Um, and the cool thing about that is that unlike a actual filing cabinet, you can uh, share files and um, and have people collaborate online. So these are different documents that we've shared amongst our team. Um, you can add to your drive um, from this, this menu. You And all these little different symbols mean different things. So if you're not familiar with this platform, I would say take some time to go through here and just to browse these little symbols, hover over them, they'll tell you what they mean and try to just play around with it and see how it works for you. Um, you can also go to recents. Um, if there's something that you know you were working on yesterday and you just can't find it, you can go into recents and, and really quickly bring things up. Um, so that's kind of just a little overview of the drive and how it works and how you can utilize this um, for yourself. All right, and I'm gonna hand it over to Anne right now and she's gonna talk about Google Docs. Um, so go ahead, Anne. Okay, thanks. I think I just changed my view. One second here. Jillian, are you going to keep control of the slides? Is it... I can give you control or I can I can keep control, whatever you prefer. Yeah, can you just, and I don't have that up at that slide, so can you just give me control? Sure. Um, I believe so. I don't see your screen anymore. You don't. Okay. Yeah, and I just. I think I. Let me adjust really quick. Um, it's not allowing me, so I can change the presenter, but it's not allowing me to um, give you control of it. Um, I believe maybe Ed Edward might have to do that. Um, so oh you want to give her control of her the, ma the mouse um so what you're gonna right okay so um let's see i need to change the presenter back to oh i think i uh, whatever you did edward i think there i can now do it okay awesome okay so you're okay and are you why don't then... you try it now Okay. I'm trying to get it to present. Whoop. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. All right. Um, so, uh, one of the main document, one of the main tools we use is Google Docs to do a lot of our planning. Um, we can all access it at the same time. We can use it to develop different types of materials like letters or reports, uh, memos that need to go out. We can use it to plan informational handouts. And one of the greatest features is that you can track, you can see live changes as we're editing with each other and um, accept and reject those changes, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, at the top of this screen here, you can see we have a little screenshot of what a top of a Google Doc looks like. And this was a day when Mary, Jillian, and I were all working in the same document. And Jillian was also signed in with our organizational email, Protect PT. So you, while you're working, you can see who is in the document. Jillian, can you change the slide? I don't seem to have the control. Sure. Okay, so we had put together a quick video for you, uh, and I'm just going to go through this a little bit. And if you, we will make these available afterwards, and you can go ahead and um, view the full thing again if you like to to get a better sense of what's going on. Oops. 
Okay, so this is a document we were all working in together. You can see on the side that we have Mary, my uh, Protect PT, and Jillian. And in here, you can choose to select to, to make direct edits or to make suggestions. So you can see us working here, and the different colors are by each user's suggestions. Um, here, Jillian is making a comment on you can add comments for things you see in here and communicate with each other while you're working. So working remotely or working with different organizations or within your team, uh, this is a really easy way for everybody to basically act like they're in the same room together um, and make the changes you need to do, cheer each other on, ask questions, and um, make, like I said, make comments on the side. Um, <laughs> um, I want to wish I could fast forward this a little bit, but so once you have suggestions in here, you can see like Mary made some comments in blue, Jillian has some comments in pink. You can accept or reject those comments on the side where you see the check mark or the X for each comment, and you can accept or reject those comments to add them or delete them from the document. Also, while you're working, you can chat directly by clicking on the top little chat by next to your icons and have a conversation with each other um, about what's going on or um, you know what you're working on or maybe some thoughts on things you might want to add without directly editing into the documents. Um, so there are, you can, uh, this video is a little longer and there's some more features we go, do go over in it and you, we will make these available so you can read the whole thing <clears throat> or view the whole thing later. Um, Jillian, can you change to the next slide? Yeah, real quick, Anne. I just want to oh. make sure that everyone has the ability to chat. Um, I had posed a question to everyone. Um, just to kind of see who had uh, who already works in this way. So if you could open your chat boxes, everyone, and um, just let us know, like, have you worked in this way in Google Docs? Uh, is this something you're familiar with, or is this new material for you? If you could just chat um, down below, um, open your chat screen, and, and just uh, let us know um, if this is something you you've done before. Um, go ahead. I'll, I'll uh, mute myself again and, and go ahead and. Okay, I'm trying to see the responses, but I've lost control of this menu again on the side, Edward. So um, we can answer some questions at the end here. So if you did have questions about Google Docs, we'll be happy to go over that at the end. Um, another thing we really use a lot to collaborate with and, and track what we're doing as an organization is Google Sheets. This functions much like uh, Excel. Um, Jillian, the um, presentation disappeared. There we go. Uh, this functions much like a Excel sheet. Um, you can use the same kind of formulas. And the main difference is that you can share this with other people and make it available to collaborators or make it available for the public to view without editing abilities. So in the next slide, um, we've made a short video to show you some of the functions uh, that we use Google Sheets for within our organization. I'm not sure if I can hit play here. Thanks, Jillian. Okay, so right here you can see we have a shortcut on our Google Chrome home screen. Because um, this is a project tracker that we use within our organization to keep track of what we have. Here you can see we have linked our different project names within the for, within the sheet, and we um, excuse me um, have everything listed. Up, to, we're we're showing the chat again here. I apologize. You can see you can chat within this sheet just like in Google Docs. Um, you can link files directly from your Google Drive into this sheet. And then you can see she linked to a project we have for a website audit, and it took us into this folder. You can see all our documents for this project here, as well as the nesting folders uh, within the drive. So it was my drive, then volunteers. Um, 
Another feature is you can, just like in Excel, you can sort your um, projects as well or your work you're doing. Um, oh, this is a more in, of the chatting. And you can see we were talking, Jillian was trying to, she's making it, you can also make a comment. I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, okay, so here we have our projects sorted by status. So we can keep track of what we're doing. If we've started a project, if it's in progress, if we had to skip it, you can see in purple, we had to postpone some because of COVID-19. And what you do is you can select this sorting option at the top and go to the column with, that you wanna sort and you can click on and off of the topics you have in your uh, for your choices of data. So we have done, in progress, not started. And if we wanna minimize this and just look at the projects we're working on, we can take out the ones that have been completed, the ones that have been postponed, and they're still there, they're not deleted, but we just still have access. And now here's just everything we're working on right now. So this is what just one great function of the uh, Google Sheets that you can use um, and again, just like in Docs, you can create a comment by clicking the little comment box at the top. And here Jillian's going to tag me in this document because I missed our staff meeting and she added something to the project. So you can assign it to someone and they will get an email notification that you've had, um, that someone has spoken to you within the document. And when you click on that link from your email, it will bring you right here. Okay. Jillian, do you think there's anything I needed to add about sheets? No, I think you covered it all. I'm trying to also answer questions. Mary, if you wouldn't, if you see a question, if you wouldn't mind just answering it um, in the in the questions. I think a lot of people are having trouble finding the chat, um, which which uh, is totally <laughs> totally normal. Um, down at the bottom of the control panel, um, like there's uh, there's the words um, go to webinar and it says effective communication in socially distanced world. Right above that, there's a little toggle thing that says chat. And if you click on that toggle, it should open up the chat. Um, but uh, if you prefer to use the questions, that's fine too. Um, Mary and Ann and I are actually going to just tag team, um, you know, answering some of these questions for you as they come in. So feel free to answer, ask questions. Um, and like I said, if we can't answer all your questions now, we can certainly answer them offline. Um, so thank you all for all your participation. Hey, uh, this is Edward. Uh, sorry, I just to uh, jump in or, or uh, kind of clarify on that. The is the question. It's question slash chat. So when you guys are asking uh, uh, questions, you're you're basically chatting with us. And we on our side, when we see the questions come in, uh, if they uh, apply to the entire group, we'll go ahead and uh, respond to the group, and everyone will see it. Otherwise, we might respond privately uh, if it doesn't really apply to everyone. Um, like I got a lot of greetings from everybody there, and I was just saying. You know, welcome to all of you individually. Uh, I hope that clarifies a little bit. And if you don't mind, uh, I just saw a question here having to do with HIPAA. And uh, in my uh, former life, I was actually a HIPAA security officer. And uh, basically, uh, it, it, Google, uh, the G Suite is it can be HIPAA compliant, but you need to uh, sign a uh, agreement a um, with Google in order for that to uh, stay HIPAA compliant. Uh, until you've done that, until you have that business associate agreement in place, uh, you cannot use uh, any of these platforms um, for any uh, uh, PHI. Yeah, that's thank you, Edward. And you know what? We're going to talk a little bit about sharing later, um, and and that's that's something we're going to kind of go over during sharing as well, like what how you can share documents with people um, within your organization and how you can share documents with people outside of your organization and how to kind of manage that. Um, okay, so, Anne, were you gonna go over Google, Google Slides or do you want me to? No, I can go ahead and finish this out. Um, Great. So the last thing I'm gonna go over is Google Slides, which is a function or which is a, a application that has a lot of functions. Um, it's similar to PowerPoint, but it's a little easier to use. 
And again, it has the same chat and sharing and editing um, features that Docs, Google Docs and Google Sheets have that make you um, able to collaborate with others effectively and in real time. Um, we've used this to create presentations. Uh, our presentation right now is in Google Slides. Uh, we've created handouts. Um, you can create social media posts or infographics just by resizing, uh, using the custom sizing to resize the, the slides that are in the document and you can add images, uh, which we'll show you in the next slide here. Thank you. Oh, do I have function now? So here's something we worked on for, um, we worked with another organization and we had been making um, our handouts in a pages program and they, this uh, organization we were working with showed us how we could use slides to make our handouts. So we had worked together on this. Everybody had added images and text, added their ideas in real time and um, we created this postcard to mail out about an incident near us. And at one point we needed to change the size from a full sheet to a postcard size and we used the custom sizing uh, within Google Slides and resized some of the elements of it and shifted them around to make a, a half page postcard. Um, you can also see we made this drinking water source uh, for Beaver Run handout about fracking incidents that happened at our drinking water source. And you can see it's just more of a handout with text and boxes. Um, and we were able to add our logo and make it um, look professional. Jillian, do one more slide. And here's something where we had, we worked with a bunch of organizations working with the Pittsburgh climate strike back in September. And we had six other organizations working on this. And using the sharing features Jillian's going to discuss next, we were able to share it with the organizers from the different organizations and allow everybody to give their input. We wanted to make sure we had uh, the input from the teen youth leaders and that everything was accurate for what they wanted to have in the youth demands. So she worked with us to edit that text. And then this was shared with everybody and they were able to download it if they needed to and print it from where they were. So we didn't have to be together to distribute the brochures. Uh, we could, just everybody could have access to download and print it. Um, and that reminds me, that's something I didn't go over in the Google Docs is that you can download any of these. Uh, you can download them as PDFs. If you're working in a Google Doc and you wanna share it with someone who's uh, not doesn't have access to Google, they're online, you can download it as a Word doc that they can edit and track changes in, and then you can add those changes back into your Google Doc. So same with the slides, we were able to share it, download it as a PDF, and print it. Um, we also made this half sheet handout for a filming we were doing, and um, a film showing we were doing, and we were able to create it, size it properly, add images, and add text, and make it look balanced. Okay, I think that's everything I have for Google Slides. I'll pass it back to Jillian. Great. Yeah, thanks, Anne. And um, I, I'd just like to mention quickly, you know, one of the things that is great about Google Slides is um, unlike a, a word processing program um, where it, you know, will constrict where you put things, uh, Google Slides doesn't do that because it's a slide presentation. You can really go to the edge of the, the paper um, you know, the the virtual paper, and you can resize it, you know, and, and this was really cool for us to be able to participate in this global climate strike with six other organizations plus team leaders. Everyone had a say, everyone felt like they were involved in the process, um, which is really great. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about file storing or storing files, um, and, and this is just, we're just really going to quickly go over this. One thing I want to mention, when we put the slides together, we always put the symbol up here for what this, what the, uh, what is associated with that function. Um, so you can see the little file folder with the guy, um, the little icon of the person inside of it. Uh, that is the, the symbol for fo uh, storing files. And Google is very much like that. It, it, it you know, tries to tie symbols to what is actually um, happening or the function. So if you play around with it, you can really learn what things do just by looking at the little symbols and, you know, trying to figure out what they mean. 
Um, so you can create a folder, a new folder, by going into your drive and um, clicking on the plus folder, and then you can go and name your folder. Um, and then you can move your folder. So this symbol here with the arrow in the file, that means move. So you're gonna move your file um, and you can sort it and, and organize it. It's kind of like when you have, um, when you have a file filing cabinet, you know, I don't know about you guys, but filing is not something I enjoy doing. <laughs> so um, it's, it's great uh, that you can super easy, you know, uh, move files and, and store files in the appropriate place and organize. Um, you know, my filing cabinet sometimes gets really, it's really hard to, to move stuff around. Um, this virtual way to move things is, is really great. So you just um, click on to select your file, you move, you can move your file where you want it with this little icon down here, with this drop down menu on file and then move. And then you choose your folder where you want to put it and it moves the file. You hit the move here button and it and you're done. Now we're going to talk about sharing. So opening files, um, you can you can move these share settings and, and tweak them based on your your needs. Uh, and this is again what what um, Edward was talking about with the um, the privacy issues uh, when we so we have a promote PT um, um, email. So it's instead of the, the Gmail or at, at gmail.com, it's uh, Jillian at promotept.com. And, and we get that domain email through our, um, through our domain. So through our, um, our website um, hosting tool. So we use Wix for our website. Um, and so Wix provides access to, um, to different um, email addresses and those emails are all hosted through the G Suite, which is really awesome because then our email is right there. And so it allows some special uh, sharing functions uh, with that type of G Suite. So you can go to share if you want to share resources and then you can share them with specific emails and you can also share, you can um, click different share settings based on uh, who you want to share it with. So for this particular file, anyone within Promote PT Inc., which is the the um, the the our our um, our organization, can view this link. Okay, so they can't edit it necessarily, but they can view it. And then additionally, if I want to send the link to anybody, if I send someone outside of our organization that link, someone that doesn't have that at PromotePT.org email guess what, they can't open it. Um, so even if I go to share something and it, the sharing preferences are, are not changed, uh, they cannot open that document. So it kind of has some internal functions there. And then if you wanna change that, you can go to your advanced. So see this little button down here? If you click on this button, it opens up a bunch of other stuff for you, uh, some other preferences. So here are our advanced preferences. You can um, choose to make a document public or private. You can share with certain people. You can set to view only. You can share a link versus sharing um, the actual um, document itself. And so, you know, let's say you have a really large document that you want to email, but it's too big to email. This is a great alternative because you can just share the link and people can can view it. But they, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't bog down their email. Um, it's not an attachment that they have to worry about opening. Um, so it's just an alternative. So for this particular file, anyone can view this file um, that has this link. If I want to add specific people within our organization or within our our members, uh, we have board members. Obviously, they don't have, um, you know, the the Protect PT email because they're board members. Um, they use their personal emails, so I can share this with them if I have this, this preference um, correct. Um, okay, and then you would just type in the, the address that you want. And again, here's your little um, icon that shows you what, the, what you're doing. So this is a sharing, sharing a file. Go to your advanced settings you're going to change, um, you're going to copy and paste this if you'd like, 
you can change it for this is this is for specific people that can access it within the organization. Um, this is um, if I wanted to set it on the public to view it, there are certain documents that we share on our website. Those documents are set to public view. Um, anyone with a link, so anyone that has the link can can um, can utilize this document uh, based on the share settings, but they don't have to have a sign in to Gmail. Um, this is someone that is within our organization. So only people within our organization can view it or um, collaborate with it. Anyone within our organization with the link, and I'm going to share with you um, how that's different in a minute. Uh, I, I showed you here our domain, so at protectpt.org. So that's what anything at promote PT, anyone that has this at protectpt.org email is going to be included in that group. And then uh, only specific people, so only people with certain email addresses that are invited to it can, can share it. All right, and this is how you can look at it. So there are going to be files that are very confidential, those HIPAA protected files, maybe your employee files, that only you can see them. So you don't, you don't wanna share them with other people. Or if you do wanna share them with someone, like our employee files, I share with the employee. They can see what's, what's in their file, I can see what's in their file, no one else can see that except the two of us. Um, so they're very confidential files. And so what I would do is set it on specific to that one person um, if I wanted to share that with them. So, and then there are files that you want to share within your organization, but not with anyone else. So those would be maybe the, the HIPAA pr protected files that you want to share with people that are going to be working on those specific files in those specific cases, um, but no one else is allowed to see those. That's where you'd have um, maybe only the people within your organization, not specific people within your organization. Uh, and then there are public files, files that you could share with anybody. Um, and so because we do have a lot of files that we share with the public, public um, facing documents that we gather and we want to share with everyone, um, we will actually set up our, our own public Gmail. So it's, it's a PPT public files. And so we put all the stuff that's unprotected, stuff that we want to share with everybody in there. Um, and then we just share, share those uh, with the public, you know, you know, anyone can see anything in there. Um, but then we keep other stuff in our other files. So I hope that makes sense to everyone and um, you can understand better how to utilize and share your files and documents that you're creating and storing in your Google. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Mary. Um, she's gonna talk to you about some functions, uh, some other functions that we, we can uh, utilize with virtual tools. Thanks, Jillian. If you want to just uh, keep up the slides and keep flipping through them as I'm going along, that might be easiest. Um, so, we're, so first of all, so um, some of you have probably already used Google Calendar, uh, but if you haven't, basically it's just like a physical calendar. It's just a virtual calendar where you can put your events, meetings, um, other information. And uh, within those events and meetings, you can see details like the time and the location and stuff like that. We'll kind of get into it in a minute. So if you wanna go ahead and flip to the next slide. So if you're trying to create a new meeting or task, you'll just go to the create um, button up at the top in the left corner and you can add a title for your event. You can add um, the date and time, what guests are gonna be there. If you want to um, put in the emails for whoever you want to be at that meeting, go, you can go ahead and do that. And you can also add location or conferencing details. You know, obviously right now we don't have physical meetings. So that would be, you know, if it's a Zoom meeting or a Google meeting or whatever it is, you can put that information in there so everyone can find it. And you can also add a description or an agenda below if you'd like to. Uh, you can go ahead to the next slide. So this just kind of goes over things in just a little bit more detail. So you can see up at the top, you have the date and time. And then right below that, you have you can make it either an all day event or you can make it a repeating event. So right now, this event here that we have does not repeat. But if you clicked on that, you could change it to something that repeats either weekly or monthly or something like that if you need to. 
And then below that, again, we have our conferencing information. So this one was a Zoom meeting, but you could also um, change it to a Google meeting if you wanted to use Google Hangouts instead. And then if you look below that, you can see um, what calendar this is on. And this is kind of important if, like us, you have multiple sign-ins, you wanna make sure that you have this on the correct calendar so you're going to find it when you need it. Um, and the description's right below that. And then to the side, we have the um, calendar organizer. And that's important to know if there are changes that need to be made to the meeting in the Google Calendar, the um, organizer needs to make those changes for it to apply to everyone. Otherwise, if you try to make changes to someone else's event, it's just gonna reflect on your calendar and that can cause some issues. Um, and then below that, you can also see who else is going to be um, on the meeting and you can see whether they've RSVP'd yet. So you can go up to the top and you can save this event if you're editing it, or you can click on the more actions tab. And you know if you need to do something like print out the event for some reason or um, something like that, you can also do that. If you wanna go ahead to the next one. So Google Meeting is, so if you set up a meeting within the Google Calendar, you can set up a Google Meeting. And it, what a Google Meeting does, it's kind of like Zoom or GoToMeeting like, or like you know a lot of other apps. Um, it's just a free video conferencing software. You can do screen sharing, people can call in if they need to. Um, the biggest difference is uh, that there are definitely like a smaller limit on the people that can attend a Google meeting as opposed to some of the other uh, paid programs. And also it doesn't have some of the um, functionality of other programs. So this might work, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, but you know, for certain purposes, you might need to use a different program. If you wanna go ahead to the next one. So if you open your Google Meeting app, um, you'll see a screen like this. And so it'll show you what calls you have up, coming up. So you can just click directly on there to join your call. Or you can also um, just join and start a meet, join or start a meeting. So you could just start a meeting and invite uh, people to your meeting. So I've used this before, actually just last week, I had um, someone who was asking me how to use a different program and um, I decided it would be easier just to do a Google meeting rather than be emailing her instructions. So we just hopped on a Google meeting real quick and we were able to go through things and I shared my screen with her and that was just easier than trying to email her a long list of instructions. If you wanna go ahead to the next slide. And so there's also Google Hangout. Uh, this is similar to like a chat app like Slack or Facebook. Um, you can chat with one person or multiple people at a time. You can have different conversations going on. Um, you could also start a video call through the Google Hangouts. Uh, but it's just, you know, a way, an easy way to keep track of conversations without either, you know, having to text everyone, especially if you don't have everyone's number, um, or, you know, if you just want to keep it all up on the computer, this is an easy way to do that. Do you want to go ahead to the next slide? So that um, kind of wraps up a lot of the Google stuff. So we're just briefly going to cover a couple other um, software options. So for conferencing, some popular options are Zoom or GoToMeeting. And um, I just included here a few different um, functionalities that they have. And so you can see it's definitely a little bit more uh, involved than Google Meeting. Um, so you still, you have a chat, which you do have with Google, but you also have recording options here. You have uh, mouse sharing options, annotations. So if you need to highlight if you're working on something you need to highlight text while you're sharing your screen you can do that or also um, illustrate something and one cool thing that zoom does is you can do breakout rooms so a breakout room if you have a larger meeting and you need to break it up into some smaller meetings instead of having everyone have to get off the main meeting and get onto a new meeting you can just break out directly from your zoom meeting uh, if you want to go ahead to the next slide. And so these are a couple other tools that were um, pretty new to using, but we found them really helpful. Uh, Slack is a, another conversation app. So you can set up streams or conversations around different projects or topics. 
Um, and it can replace emails for a lot of internal communication. So if you're collaborating on a project, you know, you have that conversation stream and you can put, you know, I could tag Ann and say, hey, Ann, you know, I just, I just did th finish this on this project, you know, here, you know, what's the next step or whatever, and we can uh, collaborate and uh, talk in uh, that way to keep up. Uh, you can also set conversations so that either everyone in your organization has access to it or that only specific people have access to it. So again, just kind of going into that whole privacy and sharing, just depending on what the conversation's about and who needs to have access to that. And then another program, uh, Notion SO. So Notions is a program where you can set up workspaces and you can link your documents and files. You could also set task lists. Um, you can mention people again, uh, but it's just a great way to kind of organize uh, your programs or your projects and uh, create menus and just keep everyone kind of on the same page with what's going on with it. And we'll show that in a video in just a minute. If you want to go ahead to the next slide. So this video is kind of going to go over our uh, notion, one of our Notion workspaces. So we have a member drive that we've been planning. So it's a big project and we are trying to, you know, figure out what's the best way to run this. So um, we're about to open up the Notions uh, workspace. And so as you can see on this workspace, we have tasks and we color coded it by staff members. So it's really easy. If I look at this, I know my color is green. So I know anything in green is something that I need to take care of. Uh, you can also see we have a calendar that's in here and we have some uh, events that are coming up. So we have a virtual lunch that we're planning for tomorrow. So we can see that in the calendar. We can see um, another virtual event we're planning coming up. And we can also toggle the calendar off so that we can easily scroll down and see other things without having a lot of clutter. And you can also uh, open, so we have a Google Doc that was linked in there. So you can open your Google Doc and you can work in that or you can just go back to your workspace and look at everything else that's in there. Um, so as you can see, we have another uh, drop down menu and we have some links in here with an article that we were looking at as we were planning one of our events. So that's just a really helpful way to kind of organize a project um, in a way that you don't have to have it all, you know, in a Google Doc or something. It's this is a way that you have a little more control with how you're viewing things. And with that, I'm going to pass it back on to Jillian to um, go over some other things. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, um, we just started using Notions and we we love it <laughs> um, because it's kind of um, it can also be used as a database. So we've been told um, by a friend of ours, <clears throat> another organizer in New York that we work with sometimes. Um, <clears throat> he uses Notion a lot and we had collaborated with him on a project um, where we were going to go to Harrisburg um, and he introduced us to Notion before all this stuff happened and we just were blown away by all the stuff you can do in here and all the different tools uh, that were available and um, we love the, that you can toggle stuff so like a lot of times when you have planning documents, you have so much information in one spot that like things can get lost. Um, so if you have headings, uh, you can also move stuff around really easily within Notion. So that's another function um, that you can use as well. Uh, it's just, it's really neat the way that it works. Um, we wanted to share with you too. So we talked about how you can use um, Google Slides to make your graphics, but you can also collaborate and it's not in real time, but we wanted to share this with you because we think it's really cool and, and we use it a ton. And some of you might already be using this um, uh, Canva. So um, maybe a chat with us or, or put it in the question if you use Canva. Um, which is really great. Um, so Canva with a nonprofit, we we actually called or uh, emailed Canva and asked them like we said, hey, we're a nonprofit. Do you have any kind of a, a discount um, or access to special features? Because Canva is actually free uh, and there are versions that you can pay for. And they gave us um, access to the pro version for free. So we have more access to stock photos um, and we use our graphics 
graphics a lot with this. And so we can collaborate in teams. This is my team. Um, we, uh, Mary will make something and then she'll say, hey, can you look at that? Uh, in Canva, and so she could do that through Slack. She could, you know, tag me in a comment in Slack or or in our Google Doc and say, hey, you know, I made these three, these two images uh, in Canva. Can you just take a look at them? And I can look at them. And uh, as long as she's not still in there, I can move stuff around how I want to and like change it. Or I can tell her like what a great job she did. Uh, I can do that through Slack. I can, I can mention that she did a really great job making an image and, and give kudos to people that need that extra, um, that extra feedback. And um, it's wonderful to be able to tell your team what a great job they're doing. <laughs> um, when we started collaborating, uh, I wasn't sure how everybody was going to be able to work um, at home and how effective people were going to be able to work at home like they did in the office, um, especially since we really missed that interaction with people in the office. Um, but I was super impressed how, how very easily our team was able to adjust to that and how much they were getting done um, just by using these tools. So I, I just you know, I was so impressed with our team and, and how they adjusted to this, this new working environment. Um, <clears throat> and so the using these tools can really help with that. Um, there are I things to consider. I just want to give you a quick time check. It's four minutes to 11 and we only okay. have to. Okay, okay, great, thanks. Um, really quickly, there's some things to consider with software. Um, you know, who's gonna be using it? We talked about that a little bit with the HIPAA um, privacy, uh, who, and um, if you want volunteers or board members to have access to it, what features do you need? Is it free versus paid? Security and confidentiality. Um, I always say, you know, if there's a system that is paid that you want to use and you want to utilize those functions, I just email the company and ask them, say, hey, we're a nonprofit. Can we have extra features for free or something like that? And sometimes they'll either offer you a discount or offer you um, free use of certain features. Um, there are some tech barriers, um, you know. Some people don't have availability to technology. So um, TechSoup is a great way for you to get um, technology, uh, refurbished laptops and things like that. If you don't have something that you need while working from home, um, some people have uh, maybe the inability to use technology because they don't have internet. Um, so a lot of these, a lot of times, you know, these, these interactive virtual calls can be done via um, phone as well, which is great. It's a, it's a good option. Um, and then privacy issues. So, you know, some people don't want their, their whole, you know, living room, <laughs> their whole um, family room on display. So there are ways within some of the technologies to, to kind of deal with that. And you can always also turn off your camera. Uh, really quick before we leave, uh, I want to talk about Catch a Fire because, you know, maybe there's something that we went over here that you just need more information about. And Catch a Fire is this uh, great way to, to utilize specialized experts in all different kinds of fields. Um, we've been using Catch a Fire and, and through GPNP uh, and um, the Pittsburgh Foundation, you have access to Catch a Fire for free. Um, and this is something that I would highly recommend everybody start utilizing um, because if we don't utilize it, you know, it might not be something that's available. And uh, if you have a small staff like I do um, and we can't get, we have so much more work than we actually, actually can ever get done. Um, so this is a great way to get that skill-based volunteer. Um, so with COVID-19, there's actually extra projects that are happening right now that can meet people's needs. Um, moving to this virtual world. And so if you go to Catch a Fire, there's some great things that are highlighted there. Connecting with the skilled volunteers. If you haven't used it, I would just say jump in and try it. Um, if you need uh, some extra tips on how to manage the projects, we well, can talk to us because we've done uh, several projects with Catch a Fire really successfully. Um, and there are some essential projects you can um, you can utilize on Catch a Fire with uh, the COVID-19 um, essentials. There's 21 projects that they highlight in there. Um, so I hope you guys have um, a lot more information now. Um, some of the platforms that we talked about, like Slack, um, we're gonna get some specialized help with because we're just really not familiar with it. Um, so, 
Uh, I know there was a question if um, the, the slides and everything was were going to be available after because some people were having a hard time actually um, doing uh, accessing the handouts. Yes. So we have given links and everything to to Edward and the, the Pittsburgh Foundation team to be able to um, get this information out to you. And you can always feel free to email us or, and we could do a video call as well. Um, so I hope everyone got a lot of information out, out of this. Are there any questions that we didn't answer um, that uh, folks really want to talk about? If you want to chat it real quick, we have a few, just one minute left. Um, just a quick note, there were some questions in here and I've answered them. Um, if you didn't get it, I can't see my reply. So if you don't see the answer, please um, feel free uh, to ask again. Yeah, I can't see replies either. I can see the question and I can I can type in my answer. Um, I tried to go through as as others were talking and and um, answer some of these questions. I know folks had trouble with their um, their audio. Um, the audio kept going in and out. And so there will be, I believe, Edward, will there be a recording of this available? Yes, so we're going to have the, once this uh, is over, we'll have the recording available and we can send a link to you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you didn't get a chance to, to um, you know, hear everything, you'll also have access to the recording. Um, and Phil's here. Phil, do you want to hey. say anything? Hi. <laughs> well, I uh, first want to apologize. Uh, my The internet in my neighborhood went down uh, right before we started, so I apologize for missing the beginning, uh, but uh, I do want to just take a moment to welcome everyone and to spe send a special thanks to Protect PT, Jillian and Mary. Uh, really appreciate all the time that you put into uh, putting this together. Great resource for our nonprofit community. Uh, I just have one quick announcement before we end, if that's okay. Uh, I just want to give folks a heads up that in the next hour or two, uh, you'll be re receiving an email from us uh, at the Community Foundation of Westmoreland County about uh, actually six different upcoming webinars uh, that we're putting on in partnership with the Pittsburgh Foundation. Uh, so we have uh, representatives from uh, the law firm Jones, Jones Day, as well as uh, um, Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Rooney, uh, as well as some state officials and others that are going to go over a myriad of topics from under understanding all of the state and federal programs that are coming out to uh, uh, financial um, uh, security during this time. Um, so it'll list all of those workshops. They happen over the next week and a half, so they're, they're coming really quickly. Um, the, and the intention is that uh, not that you go to all of them, but you choose the ones that are right for you. So uh, keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. That'll come, uh, that information will come out later this afternoon. So uh, if there's nothing else, uh, again, thanks again, Jillian and Anne and Mary uh, and friends of uh, Protect PT. And, and uh, I think that's all I got for you. All right, thanks great. Thank you me. everyone for attending. Right. Stay safe out there. Hi, all. Thank you.